So the second part is actually the most interesting part on the policy automation. So this is uh, quite different from what you guys have seen earlier, because this is where the evolution of SD-WAN and where we talk about uh, what is it that we want to automate and so on, right? So if you look at the fundamental pillars of IWAN, these are like five of them, right? We have Epic EM, which is actually your controller come orchestration, transport independent design, uh, intelligent path control, application optimization, and security. So we'll go detail into each of these technologies in the context of these outcomes. Like what are the, what do, what do they, how do they map to the existing outcomes? So let's talk about policy automation. The policy automation, that's where the controller comes in. Three, three critical things. One, we offer automation, abstraction, and centralization. When it comes to automation, it's about anything that is re all the repetitive tasks, we want to automate it. And you will see tremendous effort has gone into uh, automating the overlays and uh, setting the routing and so on and so forth. So all that part is uh, quite automated, right? So automation, don't look at it as, okay, it's not about taking network admin's job, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's about making his life more easy. So today network admins, they have more stuff to do than they can handle. It's about taking this repetitive task out of their plate so that they can focus more on business policy. When I say business policy, enabling new applications, whether it is Salesforce uh, or uh, Office 365 or so on and so forth, that is that their enterprise is enabling. And the second aspect is abstraction. Now this is uh, a critical part of uh, IWAN app, particularly. And the reason abstraction is critical is if you look at our, uh, if you look at, look at in the, in the, even in the demo, what you will notice is we'll talk less about the feature level configurations, like uh, what is the DMVP and timer, or what is, uh, uh, how do I configure the redirect, those parts you will move away from that. And you are really talking about the application policy or the business policy, right? So we want to really up-level the language in which users can express their intent so that it, we can take care of actually translating that into the networking language or the networking stack underneath. So that's where abstraction comes into play. Can you also tie in with, uh, I know you have, uh, you guys usually typically do like third party integrations. What kind of third party integrations are you talking about with that? Absolutely. Can, can you basically, can you tie into other uh, IPAM solutions, firewalls using that same policy language? Because abstraction in my mind, it's like, it's great to be able to, to bring the conversation up to a business level, but it also helps normalize a heterogeneous environment, which most people have, so. Absolutely, so uh, the right question, right? So all these all this, uh, aspects of Epic EM, whether it respect to, I'll give you a particular example there, whether it is with respect to zero touch deployment, these functionalities, all we have is uh, northbound APIs, they're actually exposed to northbound APIs for the partners to actually build on top of it, right? So let me give you an example. Uh, for zero touch deployment that I just talked about, you can actually do it through the Epic EM controller, or let's say in your current environment, you are using Prime, right? So today, what in uh, Prime 3.0, what it does is, instead of actually redoing the same zero touch deployment and doing the certificate authority and stuff, it actually uses northbound APIs to the Epic EM to enable the zero touch deployment. And this northbound APIs, obviously these are open and if there is a third party vendor that wants to actually use these northbound APIs and build on top of it, he's free to do so. And so are the rest of the uh, rest of the enablements, right? In terms of your policy and so on and so forth, everything is actually exposed to northbound APIs. How about yeah. southbound? The southbound API, it is actually using uh, using a mix in terms of southbound APIs. Uh, it is today it is using uh, a mix of uh, CLI and SNMP. When we are trying to get the repository and stuff, we are using SNMP. When we are trying to push the configuration, automated uh, validated configuration, we are using CLI and so. Okay, is that is that uh, user configurable? Can you provide templates to work with that, or is that totally closed? So the uh, the template option. So with Ivan app, if you are looking at enabling a particular use cases, we'll keep it. Uh, we keep it like pretty prescriptive. Okay. So on top of it, you will have, and we'll see that in the demo too. There is you can see more, more flexibility in terms of business policy. When what I mean by that is ability to actually define application, prioritize them, define the SLAs of them, uh, set the availability, and so on. What uh, you will see, you will not see, is setting the internal timings with within the DMVP and timeout or uh, 
turning on all the possible uh, nerd knobs that are there, right? So that part is really what we are taking it away and saying like we'll abstract this out and we are following the best practices. Okay, cool. So if you look at it, this entire uh, IWAN aspect of it, we even when we released like one year uh, three years back, we actually released it with Cisco validated designs, right? So this is something that we actually validated it, did solution testing, scaled it, and that is when we actually gave it to our customers. <coughs> but we, we exposed the CVDs as is. Right now we are actually automating uh, most of the CVDs so that you don't have to do a lot of customization for individual technology. So this is all done over this encrypted control channel? Yes. TTBS or just, or I'm assuming that the device, the branch device has to call out so what's... It's HTTPS. Okay, so it's HTTPS, and then over that channel, you're then running CLI commands at SLMP to that, that end device. It. Is there any particular reason why it's not... I don't want to say something more advanced than that, but is there a reason why it's CLI-based rather than NetConf or another API or something on, on the branch device that's... Good you could question. argue is more in touch with... I agree. Uh, yeah. An automated search. so, and I'll, I'll answer that. So, one of the thing is that there are two aspects of it. From the device level, it needs two things: the support from the device level and also from the controller level. If you look at the controller architecture, you can uh, whether it is SNMP or CLI or NetCon for uh, new means to actually communicate to router, you can actually add on top of it. We are actually looking at okay, hey, what are the other methods that we can do to to enable more performance and still the, definitely we are actually evaluating that, but. But from controller point of view, we don't make any restriction to actually say that, okay, okay, only CLI is the only strategy. That is one of the options that you'll have. All right. Yeah, I think right. The, the question at a higher level is, you know, do you know offhand like if Catalyst platforms are going to support different APIs in the future? You know, 1PK was sort of around for a little bit, maybe still is, maybe isn't. But like, are there other APIs that are going to emerge you know, on Catalyst-based platforms and even in you know, ISRs going forward? So. We are definitely looking at it. I, uh, off the hand, I cannot uh, uh, promise you exactly what, what are the dates in terms of what we are looking at it. But uh, uh, the other options, the way how I look at it is like, what are the drivers for the other options, right? The drivers is it uh, for the more performance and scale that you are looking at other options to evaluate that. We are actually looking at it from that angle. If, if we are going to adopt another option, let's say this particular option is not, not viable, then it's going to be driven by either performance or scale or open standards or one of these reasons are going to be the drivers. So just, just what, to, uh, what Samantha is saying, so we are actually working on providing that Confiang part of the platform directly. But right now, to make it easy, if you have the controller, we are already providing REST APIs for the policy engine on the controller. So when the controller switches over from CLI to NetConfiang, and if you're already using the controller, then you actually don't see any difference, right? Because you'll be using the APIs on the controller today. And so we, we started with CLI because that's readily available today with all of the components. In parallel, we have the NetConfiang being coming into place, both to the platform and to the controller. And once it comes, we flip over the controller to NetConfiang, but you already have the APIs that you can use today with the REST APIs for the okay. policy automation. So the key aspect here is, the key takeaway is, you are, uh, that's, that's where the abstraction comes in, right? The policy automation, the things that you are actually doing, that won't change, right? The underlying uh, stack will, uh, can change, depending upon our drivers, and as Pedro mentioned, if you are doing net config, we'll actually flip it, but it will be completely transparent to the customer. If you're using IOM, my question too is more about programmatic access to the device, maybe not using you know, the IOM solution. Okay. Right. It, that's what I was going to say. Selfishly, I was kind of hoping that if this is a good driver for Cisco to do it, it might encourage the adoption of a consistent and complete API on all the end devices. Got it. Right. Rather than, you know, NetComp's out there, but it's often an incomplete implementation in terms of commands, and you end up sending screen scrape CLI commands anyway through NetConf. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping there's kind of a, yeah. a yeah, synergy uh, between the two aims of actually getting to the end yeah, goal. No, I agree. I think if you have the controller, if I wins like the target, it doesn't matter how you're communicating to the device. Absolutely. Yeah. But the longer you think that, the less change is going to actually happen on the device itself because you're focused up here. You're not going to change what's down here. Then you forget about everyone else who just wants that direct access to the device, not, yeah. want, to, yeah. not wanting to use IOAN or your controller. 
Yeah. Right, but we are actually building both, right? Is that today, because we have a lot of the products out there and we have need something today, right, that is complete, so we need to leverage CLI today, right? In parallel, we are, we are building those APIs directly on the device as well as in the controller. So we'll have the ability to have like a, a higher level policy when you go to the controller or you go the low level device access via APIs. So we are building both in parallel uh, right now. And both APIs and CLI are in parallel? The, For the, now, at some point, the, the, the goal is to become API-driven and policy-driven, right? Yeah. But right now, because we have to deal with both worlds, so we have to keep both in parallel until the API world or the policy world is able to completely gotcha. switch okay. over. Okay. So for now, our driver is uh, with, with what we have to, to deliver the outcomes that we listed here. And then if you want to, if we want to later move on to the other aspect, we can do that, right? And the third uh, key aspect I want to talk about, and this is a little bit uh, controversial. I won't say controversial, but everybody has a different opinion on it, on the centralization aspect. Because then this is like uh, core of SD, SD WAN saying, like, okay, hey, I want to centralize everything. I want to centralize routing, forwarding, or whatnot, right? I can centralize everything. Send it to the controller, I will, I will make decisions there. And there are other extreme decisions saying it's just distributed the way it is, and then uh, you can still call it as, uh, call it as uh, SD WAN. So the more and more we looked at it, uh, we, we were asking the question, okay, what is it that we are optimizing for? So, and this, this really answers it, right? We are optimizing for better reaction times in terms of, hey, I have a problem in a tunnel and I need to react, it, react to that in sub-second. We are optimizing for better SLA. So if I have uh, a high jitter on my network, I need to actually react to that in two seconds and then move to the other link. We are optimizing it for last mile latency optimizations, right? So if I want to, uh, if I want to avoid my last mile challenges, I want to cache something locally. So we are optimizing for that, right? So once we actually think more about what is it that we are optimizing for, it is very clear like what our principle is. So this is really our fundamental uh, guidance, right? In terms of what is it that we'll centralize and what is it that we distribute, right? So going forward, if you see, uh, as we go through the outcomes, you will see our technology pieces will actually fall into these pillars, depending upon optimizing in for, the, for the outcomes that we are talking about. Centralize anything that has to do with uh, simplicity and agility, and distribute everything that has to do with performance and scale, right? And the third aspect is security. So, but this is really our core principle in terms of guiding us in terms of what is it that we want to centralize. We don't want to centralize for the sake of philosophy of centralization, but we want to centralize where it makes sense, right? So one of the fundamental problem uh, uh, with the, you know, the network uh, engineers have is a clear policy engine, a single touch point to actually administer your policy, uh, and a single touch point to single pane of glass to actually see uh, a system verification, right? It's not about just looking at uh, some metrics, uh, doing some show commands and seeing it. From a top-down approach to see how your entire system is operating, uh, uh, a particular site is operating, and then go all the way down, right? So there is policy automation and a requirement for saying, I need a single pane of glass to manage my entire network, right? So Pedro can show you like how it will, uh, we can show a single pane of glass. Pedro, can you show me exactly when a site gets connected, how I can see that in a map? That's right. So, so the way it works here is that as the sites connect, um, we have like a map view that provides both the health of the network on day two, you wanna see what's going on on the network quickly, and we aggregate the site. So for the case of a new site, when I go and I see there is a new site here, there is some action. Um, there is one action here on uh, Colorado Springs. And you can see that this is the topology of the site, the location, and it says it's in progress. So it's being uh, configured uh, right now. So you get the visual about the site coming online. The, the key takeaway from this is zero-touch deployment is good. You can actually enable the branch, but the maintenance of it 
uh, let's say something went wrong, how do you actually uh, how do you actually reboot the system or get it get it up with the, with the same configuration in uh, uh, in the existing state, right? If if you if something happened on that particular branch, somebody went and changed something on the branch, you want to go into the same system and so on. So when we talk about policy automation, it's just not about hey I push the configuration and I leave it there, right? It's about doing the entire life cycle of maintaining this box and making sure that it is actually compliant with what you are actually administering from a controller point of view. So that's really our guidance, uh, guiding principle from a centralization aspect of it. When we say centralization, those are the things that we actually want to centralize. So zero touch deployment, policy automation, system verification, troubleshooting, all these things we will we'll actually centralize and we'll abstract them away.